This is the Fantasy Football Unlimited Podcast with your host, Kevin Murray. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Unlimited Podcast. On this episode, we have a guest that has had a massive impact on injury analysis in the fantasy sports industry ever since he arrived on the scene. You can find his work at Fantasy Points. It's my pleasure to welcome Edwin Porras. Welcome to the show, my man. Got to see you at the expo. It was, it was a privilege. Hey, man. No, I feel the same way. I really appreciated uh, I appreciated seeing you and meeting you in person. We followed each other for a while now. We're in adjacent careers, uh, very similar careers. Uh, and listen, I got to say, it's daunting to come on a show where the opening credits have Matthew Barry and the ballers on. And then you, you got me. You're slumming with me. I joked with you, I think, at the expo. I was like, man, when are you going to get me on the podcast? But um, yeah, then you immediately extended the offer. I said, OK, let's do it. So I'm excited, man. I'm excited to talk. Um, like like you said, it was nice to finally meet up in, in person at the expo this year. And uh, I'm excited to go next year. Yeah, I mean, that's the cool thing about the expo is that, you know, these these people come to life, right? And and for you, you know, I remember when you were in, in physical therapy school, you know, really getting involved in the community and, and getting that that um, injury analysis out there. And so it's just been awesome to see, like, from afar, your your journey, which we'll get into here for sure. Uh, but for people that may be unfamiliar with what you're doing, what is your role at Fantasy Points? Yeah. So, you know, I am the chief medical executive director. I'm the only injury analyst there. So that I just give myself whatever title <laughs> I want, but I'm in charge of the injuries, right? Anytime that there's an injury, I uh, talk to our guy who does projections, right? Chris Wecht over there. Uh, we have a quick back and forth. We try to find a median and, you know, outcome. And uh, from there we write it up, right? So in season, I'm writing the general injury report. This is what you could expect for, you know, X, Y, and Z. And then obviously, you know, preseason, I'm doing all the analysis in terms of this is what you can expect for these guys and that guys. And it's, I try, I, I do my best to go very much based on the database perspective. I think there's too much conjecture in the injury space and I'm, I'm, just as guilty of it every now and then as well of just saying, well, I think this, right? Like it goes back to like the idea of clinical practice, right? You got to have a little bit of data included into what you're doing from like a, a client care perspective. Like you have to mesh those worlds. Um, but with these guys and with the NFL injuries, it's, it's important to keep in mind that we're a, we don't have hands on them. B we don't have eyes on them. C there's a lot of things that can get lost in translation. Like we're not in the room while they're being treated and examined and we don't know the team's overall goal for the guy right so it's always 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 in my opinion best practice to start with the data what does the aggregate data say and then try to zoom in as best as you can with some of the details that you have so um that's sort of my my role that's awesome and again it's been fun to see your your uh, your the evolution of, of your of your content you know since since the early days uh but stepping back when it comes to just looking at fantasy points uh, as a consumer, what are your favorite features and tools that come out of fantasy fantasy points? Dude, oh my gosh, the data suite. I know, I know that I'm not the only one that like raves about the data suite, but that thing is wild. I mean, if you want to get down to, you know, what was what were Puka Nakua's yards per route run on nights that he got less than six hours of sleep? That's like the next step, right? Like <laughs> that's like the closest thing, um, or whatever you know, uh, you know, on on the eighth Sunday, uh, you know, where there's a full moon. What was Matthew Stafford's yards per attempt? Right, like this thing just is so insanely detailed. It's got so much information in it to a certain degree, almost overwhelming, right? Because you try not to get bogged down in the stuff that doesn't matter. Uh, but really, if you wanted to look at anything, the data suite is probably my favorite thing to use personally. Like I use it every day, anytime I'm looking at stuff. Uh, and yeah, I think, I, I think if I had to say the data suite's awesome, but really I just like bumming information and, uh, you know, I'm all constantly texting Graham and Scott and I'm asking, like, I'm, I'm in different drafts, right? And I'm like, Hey, well, you know, what do you think of like this, this or that? And so really the, the, the relationships is, is also, you know, one of those things that I think uh, I value the most. Uh, in addition, obviously, all the other tools and resources that are available at the site itself. Right on, right. And now for you, professionally, again, you know, I mentioned, you know, you kind of getting involved in the community as a student. Uh, talk to me about your journey. Like, I mean, obviously, you've 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 worked as a physical therapist for the Minnesota Twins. Now you're in in private practice. Talk to me about that journey and where you're at now. Yeah, man, I <laughs> I've lived. I said that I lived the weirdest life. I've just had the strangest life. I've had. I've been very fortunate to have a lot of opportunities come my way. And yeah, it's like you said. I started one day where I was just like, you know, I like the analysis that's out there, the injury analysis, but I think I can contribute. I think there's something missing, and I think I can try to provide that. It was my last year of PT school. 
Uh, I just created a Twitter. My my girlfriend, my wife, and my girlfriend at the time was like, okay, well, you know, you got school, you got these responsibilities, you're thinking about doing a residency. Like, we are still students. We're not making a ton of money. Like, we're not making any money. And I think it would just make sense. Like, do this for a year. Let's see where it goes. You can do it for free. I understand. And then lo and behold, at the end of the year, I got an offer for fantasy points and it took off from there. And I did the injury analysis, honestly, before I even knew that I was going to be in professional sports. I just sort of let that, you know, because it's a lot of people have like the dream of like working in professional sports with pro athletes. Right. And I had kind of uh, conceded like, OK, that's a that's a different lifestyle than what my actions are currently dictating. I understand that this is going to be something that I can maybe try later in the future, but right now it's not a priority. Lo and behold, finished my residency. Uh, I got this random DM from some guy claiming to be the assistant general manager of Minnesota Twins. Uh, <laughs> I ignored it for like two, three hours because I was like, this is just spam. Looked into the guy. My wife looked into the guy's like, oh, this guy's like legit. So it was a whirlwind. It was within eight days. I did two interviews. Uh, and then I was, you know, I, I was, I got the job. I, I got the job offer. I accepted it. And I was there for two years. And um, that was really the turning point of like, okay, the fantasy stuff became a little more difficult. And so what did I do, Kevin? Oh, I decided let's write a book right in the middle of it. This is exactly what I wanted. This is exactly what I should do, right? We're going to accept days. Write a fantasy football book. Um, but no, that was fun. And that, that's that last year, the injury prone draft guide was um, really my passion project. It was something that I'd been wanting to do for a long time. So I, I finally did that. And um, now, you know, as I've grown in terms of like a following over the years, it's just been, um, I try not, I don't really take it. I try not to take it so seriously, right? Like we're going to get things wrong. Um, but ultimately, you know, it's fun meeting guys like you, other people in the space and really getting to know these people that I otherwise wouldn't, wouldn't know. That's been my favorite part. And now, now it's pro athlete physical therapy, right? That's right. Pro athlete physical therapy teed me up there. Uh, if you're an athlete in the Denver area, I'm seeing I'm seeing people now. Uh, and if you got a bump or a bruise, you're trying to stay healthy, you need a maintenance program. Here I am, pro athlete physical therapy, doing my own thing, right? So I jumped from the professional sports setting to being my own boss. And I gotta be you gotta be honest with you, Kevin. Sometimes I'm my own worst boss. I mean, you know how that goes. Sure, sure, of course. Sort of stack my schedule. Um, and uh, we were talking before we hit record about you know, I overestimated my ability to to do this specific like type of injury screen and it and it ran over. But ultimately, it is fun, man. It, and uh, I'm doing what I love to do. I cannot complain. I have I live the weirdest life. I've got big leaguers who still will text me about fantasy football. And it's so funny, right? Because like I would be in the setting right in that professional ball setting. And there would be some, you know, professionals who would text me and most and I would be like, I don't want to say starstruck, but I'd be like, hey, this is really cool. Like I this person has my number and they're texting me and, you know, but they would be texting me and they'd be starstruck that the fantasy footballers like quoted me in a tw yeah. one of my tweets. Right. They'd be like, oh, my God, the, the fantasy footballers. And I'm like, this world is very backwards. So I like to tell my wife, like I live a very, very strange life, but um, I honestly wouldn't have it any other way. It's I mean, it's that fantasy life. Fantasy fantasy football is fun because it it brings people together. Yesterday, I got a text from my daughter's orthodontist who said I'm in a and I haven't talked to him in like two years. He says I'm in a fantasy draft. Uh, it didn't go well. Next year I'm gonna hook. I'm gonna hit you up for this. I'm like this is such a <laughs> random text. Um, I love I thought that it wasn't for advice. It was just to let you know no, this is no. this is not going well. <laughs> it was great. That's I mean fantasy sports does it. I love that. So obviously you you know you have to have a, a passion for sports. Where did that all begin for you growing up? Like who were your favorite teams and players? Yeah, dude, it's so random. Like I grew up in a little town in Southwest Kansas. We were five hours from Denver. We were seven hours from Kansas City. We were like eight hours, nine hours from Minnesota. We were six, seven hours from Dallas. I mean, there was nothing, right? The Rams were there when I was really young. Then they ended up getting up and moving. So there was no real team from an NFL perspective. And then I remember the Thunder moved in. So I was a Thunder fan for a little bit. Those those formative years with like KD and Harden and those guys. Basketball really was like my first passion. Like I really love basketball. I was going to go pro. I was doing the math on, well, if I make it pro at 18 or 19, I can still be playing with LeBron in theory. And then, I mean, by the way, what the heck? He's still playing at a high, at a very high level. What is it? What yeah. is it? Anyway. Yeah. So um, that's really where like my passion for sports started. I mean, just your typical teenage boy. Um 
watching sports, playing sports, you know, trying to stay as active as possible. And that's really where it started. I, I don't really have a big like, oh, this is the moment I fell in love with sports. Yeah. But they've always sort of been in the ethos of my life. They've always just been a part of my life in, in one way or another. And now as a sports physical therapist, I, I do, you know, I don't take it for granted that a lot if 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 you were to drop a person, you know, from an alien into you know, a setting where I'm treating an athlete and we're just, you know, I'm treating this athlete, whatever. And we're just having a conversation about the NFL or, or, or fantasy football or a draft. They'd be like, Hey, that dude probably lives a pretty sweet life. He just stands around, he pokes and prods on people and, and he talks about sports. Right. So I try not to lose sight of that. So yeah, man, sports have had a huge influence into, into who I am and sort of my, even my career path to a certain degree. That's awesome. Now you felt okay Rooting for the LKC Thunder after they stole the Sonics from me, like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, I didn't even put two and two together. I didn't put two and two together. That's you know, I was so young that I was like, I think it was like in seventh or eighth grade, and I was like, the Thunder, and I didn't know anything. I didn't know one thing about Seattle, and I don't even know oh. the story there. But yeah, that was probably pretty traumatizing, huh? Yeah, lots, lots of broken hearts up here in the Northwest still. So. In the Pacific Northwest, it's it's still a bitter topic, as you can see. Um, but hopefully, hopefully the next couple of years, we'll get our Sonics back. But I mean, I, I, I'm definitely jealous that you got to experience that, you know, that KD and, and yeah, Westbrook yeah, for and Harden sure. era. That was a f- fun era for sure. So as a sports fan, is like, do you have a favorite moment you've ever experienced just as from a fan perspective? Oh, gosh, I don't know what people typically say, but one of this is very this is going to be so niche that nobody's even going to relate to this uh we when i was still in pt school my wife and i we went to a k-state football game right kansas state we both graduated from kansas state and it, i don't even remember what year it was or what it was but we <laughs> again two two very irrelevant college football teams at that time uh, i think it was like 2014 or something 13 or 14 and it was farmageddon iowa state versus kansas state and i think that game went into overtime or something and you know walk off touchdown where we have end zone seats walk off touchdowns and maybe this is why it means so much because my wife could not care less about sports she's like oh great well i will say this year she actually is in her very first fantasy draft i've been yes. begging her to be yeah. in a fantasy league with me for literal years she finally did it I, she finally caved she's going to be in a league and she's persistent she's going to do it on her own she's not she's like don't even say the names don't even say the rules i'm going to figure it out i was like okay do it okay. so anyway it was her and i and um it was super cold farmageddon walk off touchdown the crowd goes wild we're sitting we're in the end zone it's the most excited i'd ever seen her and i was like see sports are cool and like i think i sold yeah. her that day because she was like we were like you know she like jumped up in the air and i caught her and it was just like the whole thing again i ended up being like right like the finals the the final you know result was like k-state won eight games and they went to like whatever the <laughs> the um uh you know the bass fish pro bowl or something like that yeah but yeah yeah in the moment it was fun so that, that's what was, that's my favorite sports moment i've experienced in person i guess I think that's I mean, great. It's perfect. Like, you know, sharing that moment with your with your wife at this time. Like, it's amazing. I love that. How about um, how about a, your worst me- moment as a, a sports fan? Oh, that's a that's a real tough one, man, because, gosh, there have been so many, you know, that sinking feeling that that just like, you know, you're just like, oof, I'll say. All right. So I have, a comp- again, a complicated sort of geographical upbringing, so I, sure. I kind of don't really follow one team in particular but i will say i went to p obviously i said i I went to kansas state and then i went to pt school in the kansas city area i actually got to see mahomes in that first year that he started i I went to a couple of games right so i sort of by proxy became a chiefs fan and dude that patriots game that afc championship game when tom brady ripped out our hearts and mahomes didn't even get to step on the field yeah i gotta say i was watching that from home and i was just thinking to myself like this is so unfair (laughs) this just does not make any sense like why does he not to get go back i remember just being like just heartbroken because you know you you watch the you watch a guy in person you invest in the storylines you invest in the team but dude that was like a sinking feeling and that was i think that was like the the last drop or ounce of respect that tom brady just like beat and and just like battered out of me like he took it that day that was the day where i said "This, this dude is impossible yeah, and that's the hard part is that game was just so incredible, right? Back and forth, and you don't get that chance. I can see that would be that would be heartbreaking for sure. And, and speaking of heartbreaking, I mean, obviously, obviously there's fantasy football. When uh, when uh, when did you discover fantasy sports, dude? Fantasy football in particular was like 
around that same era, like f- I was in leagues. I, if I if I want to put a year on it, like my freshman year of college, which would have been 12 or 13, like not really serious. I remember drafting my team and being like, this team's terrible. And I finished like 11th or 12th. And I was like, for whatever reason, I think it was just competitive. I was like, I want to not suck again. So I don't even remember who I read. It might've been Matthew Barry stuff at ESPN. And I was like strategizing. And um, I was mortified that like my, my fourth or fifth pick, I, I was uh, driving in the middle of, well, I wasn't driving, but I was sitting in the back seat and my parents were driving and I was doing my draft on my phone, which I would never do today, by the way. And uh, I think it was like my fourth or fifth pick and I lost service and I drafted Pierre Garcon when it was like, it was like post, you know, productive post Pierre Garcon. Garcon. And yeah, I yeah. lost my mind. I was so mad. But that was the year that I discovered fantasy. Fun fact, that's the year I, I if, if I'm putting the pieces together correctly, I may not be. That same year, I picked up Justin Forsett and CJ Anderson off waivers. Mm. And I just crushed my way to a championship. Uh, that's like my first big, like my first early memories of uh, fantasy football. What was it that hooked you? I think it was that like competitiveness. I think it was just like, you know, post high school, didn't play any college sports, had this competitive energy. I didn't know where to put it, was tired of school and like reading out of a book. You know how that goes. And I just had this like energy that I needed to put somewhere. And like that competitive energy, I think just (laughs) just fell into fantasy football. Um, And yeah, no, but I think that's really, really what drove it. Now, do you have league like one league that you consider like that's my main league? That's your that's your main home league or, or anything like that? I do actually, and we are like the core of us. I want to say it's like four, five of us. Um, there, it's a ten person league at this point, but it is like the core of us that are like high school, college friends, and every year we 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 run it back and we run it back. That league, I'm terrible in, Kevin. I <laughs> like I went back and I looked at the history. I finished like sixth and then i finished fifth and then i finished ninth last year like and i get so frustrated that that's the league that i just can't topple i can't i can't take down a championship but i've uh i have a renewed interest and and we have our our draft next week and i am going to crush it this year because i'm gonna i'm putting like all my energy into like researching like how what is this particular draft how do i need to draft this and how am i going to manage it because i I gotta win it kevin i can't be the dude who's a quote-unquote professional writer the fantasy space and not win the league yeah, you need that on your resume for sure. But no, I'm sure they have a good time uh, ribbing you on that for sure. Uh, and that, that's how it goes. I mean, an eight team league. You said eight team league now or 10? Uh, 10, 10, 10. 10. Yeah, I mean, you know, anything goes in a 10 team league. But seriously, best yeah. of luck. I, I hope the best for you. So, with that league or any other leagues you've been in, any fun traditions you've had, whether it's like live drafts or punishments or any, any banter um, that you, you've experienced that's been fun? <laughs> a ton of banter. Um... You know, there's one guy in my league in particular. Shout out, shout out Pedro. Uh, he always talks smack every year, talks smack, and because of the fantasy stuff. And I go to my ESPN app because that's where we still play on ESPN. And I was just curious, and I just get so irritated because he just talks smack and he just drafts the worst teams. He drafted like five Broncos last year. <laughs> So I go to the tab and you know, ESPN has that little tab where it's like, you know, your easiest opponent, your hardest opponent. Yeah. Guess who my hardest opponent is? It's Pedro. Oh, sorry, I cussed. Pedro <laughs> It's my hardest opponent. Um, uh, you can timestamp that. Sorry. I don't know what minute 19. Sorry. Um, but yeah, man. And so that's the, the banter is always there. And uh, we used to have this tradition of a beer mile. And I the year, you know, the DeMar Hamlin year things yeah. got weird and wonky and we haven't done it since then. Uh, but we're, we just voted on a punishment and whether we would have punishment or not, I'm not sure. I need to go look and, and read the group chat, see what we decided, but we did have a beer mile and um, <laughs> I don't want to get too graphic. Let's just say that the group chat picture is a person who uh, part- got last in the league. They participated in the beer mile and, um, Let's just say the beer mile. It was at a time, moment in time. The beer mile was running in reverse, and we got a good uh, screenshot of it. I'll put it that way. Uh, nice. But it was a good time. So that's those are the things that we've done. And luckily, I, luckily, I've not haven't came in last. I will say that. Yeah, you gotta, gotta avoid that. But no, that's the kind of stuff that makes makes fantasy, fantasy leagues fun. For for you though, with when it comes to like settings, formats, anything that you prefer when you when you play. You know, I I do think that like the two leagues that I'm in, 
uh, the injury prone invitational leagues, they're, they're mirror images of each other. Uh, there are, you know, a ton of heavy hitters in there and I got to get you in one of those, but they, the settings that I really like are super flex, full PPR, three wide receivers and a flex, no defense, okay. no kicker. I think that like gets down to the nitty gritty of like strategy, right? Cause once it's yeah. super flex kind of, I, I don't want to say anything goes, but kind of anything goes. And once yeah. you thin out those receivers, right? Like, and I, I drafted from the one slot uh, in one of those leagues that I'm just looking at my team and I just don't like it. But when you're in one of those industry leagues, I think if you're drafting, I don't want to say the right way, but I think if you're on course directionally, you can look at those, uh, at those drafts and sort of tell yourself, well, if you don't like your team, like there's a good chance that other other people also don't like their team. I mean, yeah. you got to like that. I started Josh Allen, Puka Nakua, Caleb Williams, yeah. and then things just got wonky. And like my fourth receiver is Christian Watson and Xavier Worthy. But, you know, it's one of those things that like it's just a slog, right? Because these guys are all professionals. They all know what they're doing. They all know, uh, you know, what strategies are trying to employ. And so that's tough. But if I had to pick your, your the original question, if I had to pick like settings and what my favorite settings are, that'd probably be it. Yeah. I mean, I think anytime there's chaos in a draft and, and people don't know which where they're going or if it, you know, if rules are, are set up in a way where it's not traditional and typical uh, picks and ADP, I think it's, uh, it's, it makes it fun for sure. And obviously the people you're playing with make, make a big deal when, or make a big difference when it comes to just how, how successful a league is. So, so when it comes to just discovering the community, the fantasy community, when was that for you? When did you realize there was, there's a whole world of, of uh, fantasy degenerates out there? <laughs> yeah, was that, I think it was that same year that I uh, that I started putting out content as a student. Right, I, I knew that there was content out there, but it's like stepping into Narnia, man. Like I did not know how niche things got. I had no idea what IDP was. I had no idea at that time what Superflex was. I didn't even know what Dynasty was when I started. And, you know, I slowly learned all of the different ways to like, you know, the different types and and leagues and and how to strategize and, you know, rookie drafts. And then I learned that there (laughs) there are crazy nut jobs out there like Scott Fish and Ray Garvin, who are like, (laughs) I joke with them, like they're scouting these seventh graders, right? Like seventh grade prospects. Like they have them so early, these Debbie leagues, right? Where you can draft like high school players or something crazy like that's wild to me. Like I still haven't gotten that deep into the weeds, but that was, that was around the year that I discovered it. And, uh, I've been learning ever since and and it's fun, man. Like it's, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely a good time, but yeah, if you don't know what you're looking for, looking at, man, like I said, it's like you're stepping into Narnia. For sure. That's a good, a good way to describe it. Now you, you kind of came in on the early stage of, of a lot of people, you know, in the healthcare community, kind of diving in and getting involved in injury analysis. What was that like for you? Like in those early days when people are, you know, kind of finding, finding the community and getting involved in, in the industry and then seeing how that's progressed over the years when it comes to, you know, different brands, bringing on injury analysts. No, I think it's great. I, I really do. And I, I'm a huge advocate for injury analysts in general, right? Like, I think the gap that exists or existed is, is shrunk, but there's still something there, right? Like, I don't know why there still can't be uh, an injury analyst, right? On a broadcast, right? Or on even on a radio broadcast, right? Like, oh, this is what we're thinking. This is what we're looking at. You have rules analysts, right? Sometimes yeah. you even have contract, you have contract guys and girls that come on and talk about guys' contracts, right? Like there, there are so many, I think there's still like a lot left to be desi- desired. I will say when I came in, I did feel like it was, this guy's looks like a high ankle mechanism. And to me, I looked at that and I said, well, that's good information, but now what, right? Like, and I still think that, if you're looking at good injury analysis, it, it extends beyond what is the mechanism? What does it do? Cause honestly, even like to the un- untrained individuals at this point, you've probably seen this, like they're pretty good at spotting injuries at this point, just because it's sure. so, you know, we've, we've expanded so well, like, Oh yeah, that kind of looked like a, you know, a knee or an ankle or, or, or an MCL. And I think the general public's just sharper in that way. And so, yeah, I, I continue to strive to like, try to fill the void of like, okay, then what does that mean now? What? And that's really where, um, that's really where like the analysis that I try try to hit. So I think that we started there and we're moving slowly away from that. It's not, you know, as uh, prevalent, you know, that type of what now analysis does exist. And I do think that that next step, hopefully, you know, potentially would be some sort of either uh, broadcast or, or on, you know, on air 
uh, injury analyst who can come and fill in the gaps. Um, and I don't know, it's, it's a strange, it's like, it's like weird that it, I don't know, there's this gap that exists that I just, I don't think has, I, I think can be filled and I think can be fairly successful. Well, obviously fantasy points has done a great job with, with finding you. What was it about them that made you feel like this is a, a great fit for me? Yeah, it was the relationships, honestly, man. Like, um, I, and not to say that I haven't built good relationships elsewhere, um it was just the one that made the most sense and i fit in with the most i like first and foremost those guys are soup i mean just incredible people right incredible humans graham barfield one of the one of the co-owners at this point is legitimately one of my best friends like at, in general at this point um when they brought me on i i knew that they were you know they were very transparent like we want to take care of you as best as we can you know from a financial perspective, from a content perspective, like we want you to be able to write however you want. We, you know, we, they gave me the flexibility and the freedom to sort of, uh, because it was to a certain degree, I'm not, I'm not saying it's a, I'm a trailblazer by any means, but like there was less structure, right? It was like, there was less like, well, we do fantasy analysis, but we don't really know what that looks like from an injury perspective. And those guys gave me the room and the space to sort of develop as a writer and develop as an analyst and sort of give my own take my own spin on some of the uh the the on all of the analysis that, that i would put out so honestly man right place to a certain degree right place right time obviously i have to work to put myself in those positions but uh, like i just am again right place right time right people and it, and it all tended to work out and i joke with them now to this day they are my longest tenured employer i have not had i haven't been at a place long maybe that's you know now that i have my own practice i you know i look at employment a little bit differently uh yeah. but you know as a person who is employed also like i joke with him like i'm i'm their longest i they're my longest tenured employer i love that what what's been the biggest challenge for you over the years Ooh, in the fantasy space right yeah 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 i think it's uh this is hyper specific writing enough words that are actionable but not overdoing it I know that there are going to be some sickos who like they want the in like nitty gritty, like tell me what connective tissue is, how does it impact the body and what are the implications? And I know that there, there are going to be the the people out there that are just like, listen, just, just tell me how long you think they're going to be out. I'll take your estimate. It's fine. Even if it's wrong, I know that I'm in the ballpark, right? So striking that middle ground and striking that like, I know I'm not here to give an anatomy lesson. I know that I'm not here to over explain this is what a sternoclavicular injury is and these are the implications in the surgeries and it's like hey is a guy going to be okay how long do you expect him to be out what can i expect when they get back and i think if focusing on those three things have helped me sort of zone in on what do i say and how do i say it nice nice now where, what's been the most rewarding part of this journey for you man the unexpected support i think is is cool and like the people who you know, are supportive of what I do and they don't even know who I am, right? Like I have an injury, you know, the injury prone draft guy, that's 20 bucks. Some people might say 20 bucks is nothing like 20 bucks to some people is a lot of money and they choose to spend it on work that I put in. And so that's like a very cool feeling. And, you know, the other cool feeling is like, Hey, you know, I won my league because of you, right? Like, oh, hey, you you called uh, Christian McCaffrey, like, you know, a couple of years ago, like, I won my league because of you, thank you. Or like, hey, you said Brees Hall, this and this, thank you. Like, oh, you faded X, Y, and Z, like, thank you. And like, that stuff's cool because, man, the level of stress that goes into putting out, like, and you probably know how, what this feels like. Like, when I take a hard stance and I, you know, will make a, try to make like a semi-humorous, like, you know, tongue in cheek stance, but I'm taking a stance. That's sort of my flavor is like, you know, tongue sure, in cheek. Sure. And I make that stance and I, I, and the, the tweet reads very, very confidently. I'll, I'll, I'll let you peek into my soul for a second. I'm terrified. When I put stuff yeah. out like that, I'm like Cooper cup. I'm horrified. I'm horrified yeah. of saying that I'll take him in the second round right now. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm scared. Right. And like, I was scared when I said draft, draft Brees Hall. I was scared when I said Christian McCaffrey is an injury prone, like all those like takes and I've gotten plenty of stuff wrong. Right. But those big swings, those are, those are the scariest to me. And that though, that's something that I still like struggle with. And I, and I know that I still have to walk it back. And I tell myself like, Hey, even if you get it wrong, like it is what it is. This is fantasy sports. Um, and you know, you're just doing your best. You're giving your median projection. So I don't even know if I answered your question, Kevin. Yeah, no, I was really just, uh, you know, about, about the, uh, the, you know, the most rewarding part of this community, this experience for you. And, and I think that you're kind of saying the support you've had around you, right. When it comes to, 
um, just people believing in what you're doing and, and obviously letting, you know, letting your, uh, your work, you know, do the talk. And I think that, um, this community is special. I think that, you know, you've seen that you saw that at the expo, right? Like, you know, getting to meet people the, for the first time in person, what was that experience like for you? No, this, it was really cool. Right. So like you get to meet, and this was my first time at the expo. And so you get to meet people that like, you know, they got a screen, you know what their, their, their screen name is and you know, you know what their avatar picture is. And, but then, like you said, they come to life and, yeah. you know, to have people again, come up to me and, you know, just say like, Hey, I really appreciate your injury analysis or, Hey, I really appreciated your take on X, Y, and Z. Like that stuff was super humbling. Um, I've never stood out in a crowd before. This was like as like a very uncomfortable, like to a certain degree situation, but it was cool to meet the people like shout out Toronto Dave on Twitter. Um, yeah. he is one of the coolest guys that you can see that you'll see in the community, very reasonable down to earth, uh, genuine, genuinely inquisitive, right? Like very curious once, you know, understands like nuance and, and really smart, sharp fantasy player. And he's not an analyst, uh, to, to, to my knowledge, he, he doesn't, he doesn't do analysis himself, but seems to be very centered and like focused on, uh, the content in a, in a really sharp way. And he's always, he's been a big supporter of mine. We've followed each other for a long time. And like, he came up to me and said, Hey, Edwin, I'm Toronto Dave. And I was like, Holy shit, this is cool. Like, dude, I haven't <laughs> yeah. seen, I didn't even know you were going to be here. Like, so that, that was kind of the, the coolest part is just meeting the people, um, in person and then, you know, running into them and being like, Oh dude, yeah, you're just as cool in person as you are online. Right. I don't think there was one person I met, you know, that I, I had a negative opinion walking away. I, I think, yeah. I think, uh, if anything, I was like, Oh man, like, I can't believe that I hadn't met this person before. I didn't follow them before. How did I not know about them type thing? That's sort of how I, uh, walked away. Yeah, it's definitely a, a very surreal experience. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it's a fantasy football fantasy to, you know, get in an event like that and meet everybody and, and hang out with everybody for, for multiple days. What was your favorite event, uh, over the weekend? Oh man, my favorite event was probably the drafts. I wasn't in any, but I like to sort of uh, walk around and 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 see how people are drafting, see how the experts are drafting. Because you know, you had snake drafts, you had auction drafts, um, all kinds of different uh, philosophies and all kinds of different uh, strategies that were implemented. I mean, we had a in a non tight end premium league, we had a guy go bully tight end, and it was in a in a salary cap draft. Everybody was looking around like, well. I, I, it could work for him. Let's see how it goes. Right. So like just seeing the different strategies being employed and then seeing the experts who you, you know, like people that I look to as like, oh man, you're the experts and seeing them just like, kind of like, you know, rub their temple and just, you know, they're struggling and they're like, oh, I don't know how this is going to go. Right. Like sort of seeing that human side, like that was probably my, my favorite part. So not to, not to say that I like watching people be stressed out, but it was cool <laughs> and humanizing to see these sure. super sharp people be, be stressed out. And to be fair, they were also a little hungover. I love it. No, it's great. Uh, obviously, football does bring us together, and you know, people flock to Canton to hang out that that weekend because of this passion for fantasy sports uh, and football. So, twenty twenty four is coming up. What are you most excited for for the uh, uh, upcoming season? Yeah, man. I think that um, just all the questions that come up in the off season, right? Like, I know that there, whatever that's that statistic is of, uh, you know however many playoff teams like more than half of playoff teams don't repeat that you know don't make the playoffs in the following year that's going to be cool to see we're going to see how does aaron Rodgers? how do aaron you know from an injury perspective right how do aaron Rodgers and kirk cousins a 35 year old and a 40 year old respectively how do they bounce back athletically from an achilles tear right that's going to be something for me like as a pt as a nerd i'm going to be watching like how does that look uh we have cam Akers coming off two achilles can, you know he's going to win that RB two job. It looks like, um, you know what is what is he going to look like? And you know I think those are the biggest questions. I think the biggest question because I've been I've seen both sides of the fence here, like from a football perspective, is like can the Texans repeat? Like is 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 not Nico? I'm sorry, is CJ Stroud like the next coming of Peyton Manning? Yeah, or was yeah. last year just you know is he going to regress to a point where would be, would be reasonable to anticipate? Right? Or is that offense like? Are they going to be like the Bengals of a few years ago, right? When the Bengals seemed to be, you know, two, three years ahead of schedule and, and they made it to the Super Bowl, right? Is that going to be the Texans or are they going to flame out, right? What does that look like? You know, I'm looking at the Lions. I'm a little nervous. I don't know what your opinion is, but like, hey, that's been a good offense. There's no reason for that offense not to be good again. But 
you know, again, we've seen offenses struggle the next year. Right. And so from a football perspective, there are a lot of different storylines that I, I think are going to be super interesting. I think Bryce Young, right. The, the Panthers, I think don't get enough credit and, and they get a lot of flack because they have made a lot of bad decisions and they, and you know, they've struggled in the past. And I think yeah. you can have your fair criticisms of, of the ownership group, but like to their, everything that was in the Panthers control, I want to say almost everything that was in their control to try to enrich the environment that Bryce Young is in. Like they did that, right? They brought in a young running back, you know, off ACL, but he's young, talented running back. They brought in Deontay Johnson. They fixed the offensive line to a certain degree, even if they did overpay, right? Like they are putting the pieces in place, uh, in, in a similar way that, you know, the, the Texans have done with CJ Stroud to help Bryce Young be, uh, successful. So I don't know, man, like, I just think that as soon as, you know, what do the new kickoffs look like? I don't know, man. Like yeah. I'm like a little kid. I, every year I tell my <laughs> wife, like, I'm so excited for like football. And she's like, she like rubs him back. She's like, I know, I know. And so I'm just excited. I don't know. I'm kind of excited for everything. Well, yeah, you just, you just brought up a ton of storylines that I, I agree. I mean, there's, there's, it's always fascinating. I'm with you on that. Uh, any players that you're excited to, to jump ADP for this year that you just got to get on your fantasy rosters? Yeah, man, I'm telling you, Cooper Cup. He's one of guy. He's a guy that I'm about. I think I'm literally right now, Kevin. I'm in a slow draft at one of those super flex leagues. I think I'm literally about to take him if Nico Collins isn't there uh, in the back half. I start. I'm picking from the 12 slot. Uh, I I went I went a little early, but I went Jalen, uh, Jaden Daniels, and uh, Brees Hall. Uh, two is gone. Trevor's gone. Like I think I'm about to go wide receiver, wide receiver, double tap, and you know Ayuk's there, but I'm probably gonna go. I don't know. Maybe we'll go Waddle and uh, Waddle and Nico or Waddle and Cup. I'm probably gonna do that. Uh, obviously I think, uh, Brace Hall is, is, is going to be a smash, right? Some guys yeah. lower ADP that I think injury really sort of screwed them last year. I think Javante Williams is getting double counted. I think that, that, that multi-ligament tear, uh, it really was something that, that people were double counted and he's still going in the hundreds. Like, I think even if that offense doesn't look great from a fantasy perspective, Sean Payton throws to the running backs. I think Javante can be okay. I think he can pay off his ADP, right? Like I'm looking forward to really like, those are the things that I look forward to um, those injury discounts, right? Um, you know, I don't want to go the negative direction, but you know, I'm probably going to try to get as much Blake Corm as possible because I am not confident that Kyron Williams can stay upright. Um, I hope yeah. he does. Don't get me wrong. I, I really want him to. And if he does, obviously he's going to be a smash pick. I'm not saying that he's not a good pick, um, but I, I, you know, I'd love to see Blake Corum get in there and see what he can do in that offense. He's basically, a, you know, the closest thing to a clone of Kyron Williams. So uh, I'm taking a lot of him and I'm, I, even though he started on pup, I'm still taking a lot of Jonathan Brooks. I think that he can be again, light emphasis on the light. I think he can yeah. be a breeze hall light this year. Right. So um, a lot of dudes in particular at ADP that I think are, um, can be successful. Josh Downs is another one. Easy money. Like he's a, a guy you can easily get on your roster at this point. Uh, but yeah, man, there are a lot of guys again, like I'm, I think I said it, I'm, I'm excited for Cooper cup to show, you know, he's the most recent triple crown winner for a reason. And even if he's yeah. not a top five guy, he can still be a top 10, top 12 guy um, and smash his ADP. So I don't know. Those are, those are a few guys that I'm, I'm pretty excited about. I love it. And when you say Jonathan Brooks, uh, he's a perfect example in fantasy where, you know, he's going to be there. You don't have to overdraft him because people are afraid. But as soon as you pick that guy up, you put that guy on IR if you have an IR spot. And all of a sudden, you got an extra roster spot. And ro extra roster spots are very important in the beginning of the season because you know that week one waiver is going to hit. Week two waiver is going to hit. And you, you're going to want to bring on more players than you have room for. So he's a perfect player to, to get on the team, put on IR, and just let him help be, be there down the stretch because that's probably where he's going to do his damage this year 100 now you bring up a couple things uh the the idea of injury prone the, the the term injury prone for the listeners and viewers share your thoughts on that yeah so again i'm a, i'm tongue and tongue and cheap kind of guy and uh really the injury prone thing is there are obvious things like hamstring strains soft tissue stuff groin strains like those can be a sequela as soon as one hits you know you're you're at risk for another one right but by and large i still think the community overvalues or undervalues in either direction an injury right like i think there's still too much of oh that injury is going to zap his you know production or you know it's going to the, the classic ones like oh high ankle sprains are going to linger 
Well, you know, in the second week back from a high ankle sprain, wide receivers are actually about 94% of their baseline production, right? Uh, running backs are back to over 100% of their baseline production after two weeks. Um, you know, there are a lot of narratives that still are pervasive in the fantasy space that are honestly suboptimal and they're causing people to lose money and lose leagues. And you're just helping your league mates, you know, beat you in, in those circumstances. And um, I think just overvaluing and undervaluing, even I put out, right, like I put out these uh, re-injury risks, right, and re-injury numbers that are, are based in objective data, based on what we know, based on, you know, history. But that doesn't always perfectly project forward because A, you know this, human bodies are all unique. They're all different. They all respond differently to treatment. And, um, you know, those those numbers aren't static, right? You don't think that Cooper Cup you know, and his ATs and PTs didn't just rehab the hell out of his leg and out of his hamstring as, as best as they possibly could. You don't know that they're managing, you know, all of the steps, you know, down to the steps that he's taking, how many hours he's sleeping, his recovery, his water, right? You don't think that they're changing, right? So those numbers and those, that data isn't static. So I always try to like leave that caveat of like, Hey, even though this is a re-injury risk, like this is still something that we need to try to zoom in on from an individual perspective. So really what I'm saying is like, blanket throwing out this guy is injury prone or these guys are injury prone or this specific injury leads to a guy being injury prone, I think is still wrong analysis. And like still surprisingly, even among some sharp analysts, I think it's used too often. Um, but I have seen a shift recently where, you know, there is that humility there. Of, and that's what I would say is like, I just encourage humility, right? Encur I encourage not knowing. And one of the biggest compliments that some analysts have given me when they're talking to me is like, the hum like they say that my analysis is 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 you know has humility to it and i really appreciate that that means a lot to me because i do point out like hey but at the end of the day we don't truly know this is just the median outcome that we're projecting and i think if we had more of that in the fantasy space i really honestly think our our, our rankings and, and our adp would be a lot sharper which you know what kevin maybe we don't want that because they're already the margins are already razor thin and, yeah, and i yeah. want my advantage anywhere i can get it yeah, you're right. It's speaking in absolutes when we don't know, <laughs> we don't absolutely know everything. Um, it's it's a great thing to um, to bring to bring some light on because you know you're right. There's there's certain things we don't know, and you again, you you know, you mentioned the your hands, your eyes are not on these players. You don't know every detail, but you can base your you know some analysis on the the data you have and and give a a best case scenario, worst case scenario, and and, and move forward again with humility. I love that. Any players this year, though, that you're, you know, you're extra concerned with any injuries that you like typically, you know, get a little pause with when you when you when someone uh, comes with comes down with a new injury? Yeah, no. So good question. Right. I already mentioned Kyron Williams. Right. And, and, and again, I try to be as nuanced as possible. Kyron Williams, incredible player. Obviously, Sean McVay said that he would want him to be his god, his uh, godson, right? Like all the things, and and he he showed down the stretch. Um, but when you when you zoom in a little bit on Kyron Williams, right, he's got a little bit of that. And I'm not saying that he's this person, right? But he's got a little bit of you know, who, who's a good comparison? His his draft profile isn't great, right? You he, he's kind of a smaller guy. He didn't profile that well. Not super fast. Those guys don't tend to do great in the long term. Um, and, and then on top of that, you also look at the four foot and ankle injuries that he's had just in the last two years, right? Two different surgeries and two different fractures. And, you know, obviously you need your, your feet to stay upright. And once you have an injury, the best predictor of future injuries, previous injury, you know that. And yeah. once you, once you get a couple of different fractures and injuries at your feet and ankles as a running back, like that can get dicey. So I worry a little bit about Kyron Williams. Um, and, you know, I, I'm not, I don't want to say that this is like a huge, you know, this isn't some huge stance to take, but I've been off of Nick Chubb and not necessarily because I don't think he can bounce back per se. I just don't see the upside. I'm not sure where the upside is with Nick Chubb, right? Like you see an 11% dip in most running backs coming off a minimally complicated ACL and Nick Chubb's, you know, this is, he's torn every cruciate ligament, every ligament in his knee, uh, since he was in, in college and, and he had two two surgeries to correct it this year. Not to say that he can't be the one exception to the rule, but I don't see the upside, right? If we see even an 11% dip in his production, the best case scenario, he's what? RB20, RB21. Yeah. That's not that's yeah. not going to win your league. Uh, and another guy that, you know, same similar issue, you know, is Mike Williams coming off an ACL. He's 30 years old, not a great zone coverage beater, right? About about 78% success rate against zone. Uh, in terms of Matt Harmon's reception perception. And uh, I did a study showing that if the receivers who have been hyper productive after an ACL, the first year after, they have at least an 80% 
success rate against his own coverage. And that's just not how Mike Williams wins, right? Like, how is he going to be explosive? E let's say even, let's say t Hall of Famer, future Hall of Famer, I'm joking, about Tyler Conklin. Um, let's say he, you know, goes down with injury or something happens to him. And, you know, he's sort of the, def and Mike Williams is the de facto tight end, right? Let's say he gets 20, 30 jump balls from Aaron Rodgers this year. How explosive and and how um, aggressive is he going to be able and confident is he going to be able to be to jump up and grab those, pull them down and have some touchdown upside? Another guy with like, I just don't see the upside in particular. And that's really where a lot of my analysis la tends to land, Kevin, is, you know, is it is it like I'm worried that there's going to be a re-injury type thing or is it just like I don't see the upside because of the injury? And another guy I think is J.K. Dobbins, right? Like Dobbins, obviously. And again, this yeah. is all baked into ADP massive ACL issue plus, right? ACL plus, plus, yeah. plus. Then he comes yeah. back, tears his Achilles. Um, you know, I, I don't like to be the conjecture guy again, like I mentioned at the top, but you look at a picture of JK Dobbins calf, dude, that thing's miniature compared to the other yeah. side. Um, that just inherently implies that he, he just can't, he can't possibly be as strong as he was before the injury. Right. So, you know, is he going to have, maybe I think he, he could have a hand I'm predicting. I've been saying this kind of everywhere is like, I hope that he has a good season. I hope he bounces back. I hope he can be the one to prove me wrong and, and prove the Achilles injury truly is dead. But I anticipate he'll have a couple of big games. He'll flash like what we used to see the 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 old age J.K. Dobbins do. And then I think he's I think he'll sort of fall to the wayside like a lot of other uh, running backs have, unfortunately, to after the Achilles tear. So those are just a handful of guys. Um, but if they all prove me wrong, Kevin, then that means we've made some advancements in sports med. And uh, yeah. and, and that's fantastic. Yeah, no, I think that is fantastic analysis. Um, such good analysis. And I think it's a great, um, you know, vantage into like why sports, you know, injury analysis is such a helpful tool in fantasy. Because obviously you want the best for these players. But, you know, when you're drafting them, right, you know, you got to think about ADP and who else is around them. And you're basically just taking this this information, you know, in and, and steering away from situations that are, you know, are, are – Less safe in a, a J.K. Dobbins, you know, drafting him. It's yeah. You know, there's there's other players to take, you know, in that round that that are safer picks, more likely to you know to help you win your fantasy championship. So great stuff right there. I love it. Uh, one last thing on the injury front. What is the official stance, you know, for you on on those old men with those Achilles injuries? Oh man, that's tough. These right? quarterbacks, you're, you're, I'm talking you're, about these quarterbacks. Yeah. <sighs> We'll see, right? Like, there's no data to lean on. There's no, there aren't even case studies necessary to lean on. We've never had um, guys this age in the NFL who were playing quarterback at a relatively high level yeah. uh, come back, right? We've never seen it done. Now, if there are going to be quarterbacks who do it and do it well, it will probably be this archetype of quarterback, yeah. right? These guys who were basically non mobile before the injury. Um, that's something that I think is going to work in their favor to a certain degree. Now, if Jaden Daniels or Lamar Jackson, you know, knock on wood. I'm not wishing on uh, wishing this on them. Yeah. Knock on wood, knock on wood. I don't want this to happen. If that if if that were to happen to them, then like a big part of what makes them them would then be limited, right? And you'd be a yeah. little more concerned. But with these guys who are already not as mobile, uh, it's it's something that I think that could could work. So what they have to overcome, number one, is the mental side. But number two is, and you know, if the mobility isn't an issue, like they still have to overcome the chance of recurrence, right? Which is pretty low the last time we checked in the general population. But again, these guys are not the general population. They're sort of the cream of the crop in terms of athletes. So can they overcome the chance of, you know, this happens, we see it, right? Like the opposite side rupturing. Um, are, can they overcome the, the potential for calf strains because the calf attaches at the Achilles? Can they overcome the soreness and the tightness that they're probably going to feel right and continue to play and feel like themselves. I, I don't think that they're going to feel like themselves, either of them this year, but it will be interesting to see how they bounce back to what degree they bounce back. If I had to guess, right. If I had to put money down on, you know, who might be more successful, it probably is right in line with what we would believe. Even if they weren't six, even if they weren't injured is probably Kirk cousins is going to look a little better, even though it is his, his, you know, his push off leg. I do think that he's going to look a little better than Aaron Rodgers, Who's five years older, man, five years yeah. at 30, between 35 and 40. That's, that's a pretty decent gap, especially at the yeah. highest levels of, of sport. So, you know, I hope this doesn't happen, but you know, 
soft tissue injuries, calf, calf strains are always a concern. There's definitely risk involved with these guys. And so there's risk involved with their, with their weapons. So, um, you do have to bake that in a little bit. I'm probably more so drafting in this case, like in both of their cases, the pancakes, right? The, 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 the running backs, the receivers, the tight ends, I'm probably drafting those guys more so than I'm drafting, uh, Kirk cousins and Aaron Rodgers. Uh, ultimately in general. So that's sort of what we're, I know it's a hedge. It's not great yeah, analysis, good. but again, it comes back to like, there is a little bit of risk involved if you take those guys, especially in like super flex leagues. So this is my question. My follow-up question is, do you have any rosters where you have Aaron Rodgers or Kirk Cousins on them? I've got some best ball teams with Kirk Cousins. Okay, I might have one. And okay. So yeah. So my subconscious stream of, you know, stream of consciousness, I, I have it right. I think I only have one team with Aaron Rodgers, but I do have a handful of teams with uh, that Pitts Cousins stack. Uh, so we'll see how that works out for me. Okay. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, let's dive into some rapid fire questions. I'll just throw out some questions. You let me know what, what first comes to mind. Uh, what do you enjoy most about what you're doing in the industry right now? Ooh. Oh, God. Rapid fire. Oh, a lot. I would really say that the uh, the recurrence rates, right? Like recurrence rates because they give us a good projection and a good median outcome to expect for players. There you go. Uh, what are your favorite hobbies and activities outside of fantasy sports? Yeah, I love going uh, like on hikes and trails. I live in Colorado now. Love love the Denver area. There's so many uh, trails and different parks that you can go to. My wife and I love uh, going to different state parks and different um, areas, you know, in the in the western like side of a west side of Denver in the Denver area. Like we love exploring, we love being outside as much as possible. Uh, that's what I, that's what I love doing outside of fantasy and uh, PT. How about an all time favorite TV show? Oh man, the thing is, I didn't really watch a lot of TV once I got to like college. All time favorite TV show though. I, if I like off the top of my dome, Breaking Bad was really good. I think they just Breaking Bad was just a masterpiece yeah. and like they didn't extend it out too long. They by the time they got to like season two or three, it felt like they knew exactly how it was going to end, the direction they were going to take it, what it was going to look like. And they haven't tried to sort of reboot it. I mean, I guess it is probably too soon to reboot at this point. I and mean, maybe that'll come at some point, but they haven't tried to reboot it. I just think they did a really good job with that show. It's great analysis right there. Uh, what, what's your all time favorite movie? Dude, I'm going to get made fun of this and my wife still makes fun of me. My all time favorite movie is uh, Hocus Pocus. I am <laughs> I a Hocus it. Pocus stan. I, okay. When Hocus Pocus 2 came out, I was losing my mind. I, I love the Halloween season. Uh, I love everything about it. Like I, I, just, I love the scary movies. I'm a big scary movie fan. I like the Michael Myers movies. Those are cool too. I okay. recently showed my, this is why I'm a bad uncle though. I, he recently like showed the series to my 14 year old nephew. He's like hooked now. Um, <laughs> that's why I'm a better uncle than I, I would be a dad though, Kevin. Uh, that's awesome. How about a sports movie? What's your favorite sports movie? I have a hot take. Can I, can I alter the question? Let's go. Let's go. Remember the Titans? Yeah. Great. Listen to my words carefully here, Kevin. Great story. Okay. Incredible inspirational truly uh, uh, um the the best of humanity and our attempts to find the humanity in each other great story the movie's trash the movie's awful <laughs> the action is bad the running in the, the football's bad the inspirational speeches at the halftime and in the huddles uh, terrible the acting really isn't that good denzel's worst job worst movie in my opinion in general why are they running near a cemetery when they're in camp why is a high school team taking a bus to go to camp none of this make kevin my brain was broken when i watched that movie and if i watch it again if I watch it again, Kevin, I might just I might just vomit. I can't the, just it was a poorly put together movie. Um, I didn't answer your question, but I, I had a, I had a movie take. But my favorite movie, my favorite movie, that sports movie, probably Coach Carter. OK, OK, that's that's a good movie. But that was that was a phenomenal take. Um, there's going to be people that don't agree with that take on Remember, Remember the Titans. But you, you, you led with some some bold you know, opinion and, and, uh, some passion. So how can, how can you argue against that? That's great. Uh, who's your favorite, uh, band artist and musician of all time, man. You know what? I don't think that hip hop artists get enough love, uh, Biggie, right. Notorious B I G Biggie Smalls, whatever you want to call him. If you read his lyrics and you just put them side by side, I, I'm not going to pretend that I can read music or anything like that, but if you just look at his like literal bars, and how he structures his his words and how he put together his music and the stories that he told 
like one of the greatest artists in my opinion of all time uh obviously you can you can dislike the genre or you can you know not not vibe with the words that are being said but ultimately with him a lot of the times they were he was telling stories or things that actually had happened or stories that happened to uh people that he was closely associated with and then for him to put it on a on a beat that was just like makes you nod your head like i i encourage you to go read the lyrics to juicy by biggie and then not walk away thinking to yourself dang that's like one of the best songs that was ever written and it, it was catchy at the same time like my favorite song is juicy um and and i think that uh he's one of my favorite artists ever that's i mean pure talent for sure how about a, a best uh, vacation you've ever been on man we went to my wife and i went to aruba for our honeymoon and we have been trying to go back ever since and I'm, I'm saying this is the year, Kevin. <laughs> this is the year we're trying to go back. So oh, back to Aruba. So if you had a bucket list travel destination, is it Aruba again? Or is there another place you'd like to get to? It would probably be Aruba again. And not that we make the most money in the world now, but when we went, we were still both grad students. Um, so we'd be able to splurge a little more, Kevin. We wouldn't nice. be on that dollar menu when we got back. So we would probably stay in, an, in a nicer area, but it was still fun. It was still great. Um, it, it, we, we really loved it. But yes, if we had to go back, if we had to go anywhere right now, um, it would be Aruba. But that doesn't mean that the list isn't long. I love it. Uh, what are you most grateful for at this time? Man, cutting deep, Kevin. And maybe I just take, maybe it's just my translation of the question. I was thinking about this, you know, and I've been thinking about this a lot lately. I get to do, to, obviously within reason, I get to do whatever I want. I get to hop on a podcast and talk to you. I get to watch football and it's essentially paid for. I get to see the type of clients professionally that I really enjoy seeing. I get to meet the people that I really enjoy meeting. Um, and I get to come home to a super supportive wife and um, a pup who's laying over here on the ground, um, looking strike very uncomfortable. So like, I'm kind of just grateful for as, as cliche as it sounds, I'm grateful for the life that I'm able to live now um, and the conversations that I'm able to have like this. It's great. I mean, you're living that fantasy life. No, I think uh, I think that's awesome. It sounds sounds like a, you're in a great place right now. Definitely thrilled for for your future ahead. Uh, can you name some of the people that have, just, have had a huge impact on you during this journey? Yeah, man. I mean, I, I've mentioned her a few times at this point. Like, my wife has been the most like my biggest fan, and she's a rock star in her own right. She is uh, super successful in what she does. Um, she's a pharmacist. She is published on several different studies. She helps a lot of different people. Uh, in the substance use disorder sort of addiction medicine realm mm -hmm. she does like she does god's work man like she's an incredible human and for her to like support me um i i've just like so grateful for her like she's had the biggest impact on me and you know other mentors in general um you know like my pt mentors like Ta dr todd davenport he's my mentor from my, my residency he's made a huge impact on me uh some of the people i worked with at the twins have made huge impacts on me i mean there are too many to list i don't i don't want to necessarily even put out names because we're all like truly just a a what's the word like a product of the people that we're surrounded by or have been surrounded by and um i've been super fortunate to be surrounded by some pretty pretty uh smart caring kind individuals Nice, nice. Now, what do you, uh, what advice do you have for people that want to get more involved in fantasy sports and maybe even like healthcare professionals, professionals that want to uh, find a, a path in this uh, down the same road that you've gone? Uh, reach out to me. I mean, reach out to me at injuryprompod at gmail.com and we can talk more specifics. But other than that, just put it like I know this is cliche at this point, but it really is true. Put out content, but put out content that is specialized, that is niche. And that is different, right? Your voice can't get drowned out very easily. But if you want to put out content, I guess really, if I were to zone out even more, zoom out even more, I would say, get off the fence, decide if you want to do it. And if you don't want to do it, that's fine. That's okay. Like it can be something that you do at a later time or whenever you can always decide. But if you're off the on the fence, just get off the fence, right? Like be decisive, make the choice that you want to do it. And once you want to do it, whatever, whatever, like, uh, whatever full tilt looks like for you let it be full tilt if full tilt for you means one hour a week then it's one hour a week if it's 20 hours a week go 20 hours a week like whatever you do make the decision run with it and just go for it that's what i would say that's a great advice edwin anything else uh, that we haven't covered that you want to share before we close things out dude you're a master interviewer i mean you like cracked my soul open on this on this interview <laughs> i really appreciate it this this has been a good time i, I really appreciate it man it's been good but no i don't i don't have anything else.
Okay, sounds great. No, I, it's been it's been a pleasure having you on here. Definitely had you on the list a long time, so it's not just our conversation at the expo that, that had me uh, reach out. So it's a great time of year. Obviously, we got football ahead of us, so I'm excited for you. Everything that's ahead of you in 2024, can you share with the listeners uh, where to find you? Yeah, at FB Injury Doc, and then I'm just uh, you know pushing the, the draft guide I mentioned a few times, the injury prone draft guide. You get everything there, right? You get my injury-based tiers, injury-based rankings, essentially, all the profiles for all the major guys. Um, you get, you know, uh, all all of the, um, you know, the season-long playbook, which is essentially all the things that we talked about, like the the recurrence rates and stuff like that. Um, you get all that, right? Wrapped into a nice little PDF for you, and you can you can check in on your iPhone. Uh, I know there's a lot of different places out there you can get your info. Um, I do believe that this is one of the best that you can invest in. And Kevin, I got to send you one. I'm not sure I've sent you one yet, so I'll make sure to send you a copy. I, I appreciate that. I'll definitely consume that for sure. Appreciate you coming on, Doc. Can't wait to see what's ahead for you and, and best of luck in 2024. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you for listening to the Fantasy Football Unlimited Podcast. Until next time. Be sure to follow and subscribe to all of FFU's social media accounts for daily content.